This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons throughout history. And on this week's episode, he's taking a look at some of the sci-fi weaponry of Bethesda's Starfield. This looks like it shoots actual rainbows, Dave. It's reminding me of various effects for, like, Gauss guns. Why it would be multicoloured? Don't know. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to Starfield guns, definitely make sure to subscribe as we'll be doing a second episode on more of the game's weapons next week. And if you're interested in buying Starfield, GameSpot's sister site Fanatical is selling the premium edition of the game, and you can save 17% when you use the code Fanatical17. Details are in the description of this video, and just an FYI, GameSpot and Fanatical are both fandom companies. Right, over to Jonathan and the guns of Starfield. first thing I'm seeing here is a bullet weapon, a projectile weapon, but it's a radically different design. So the overall look is really nice. I like the two-tone-ness of it. Markings do say caseless. Absolutely, I would expect caseless ammunition. If we're still using bullets in, in two, three hundred years, I would expect those to be caseless, not, in fact, the traditional self-contained metallic cartridge. My one complaint are those iron sights. Iron sights on a space gun. Why? Don't get it. Right, upgrades, of course we have upgrades. The pistol itself actually has a permanently attached laser unit on the on the bottom of the of the gun at the moment we don't see that almost well we do sometimes see that we typically don't what we see is a rail and you can attach the latest in laser light tea making uh whatever accessory onto the bottom of your pistol there's no reason to think that that would change in terms of actual upgrades what i'm seeing is some sort of muzzle device we'll see how that works it looks like it might reciprocate and just a very long extended magazine um, uh, much like we see today, so sort of 30, 31, 32 round mags for, for the Glock, for example. This one happens to be red because the pistol has red highlights and they've gone with the red for the mag. Um, it is clearly marked with the caliber, as is the rest of the gun, actually, which we can see is 7.77 by 27 millimeters. 27 millimeters is an absurdly long, car well, not absurdly long. We do, we do get pistol cartridges that long, famously developed for PDWs. They make for a very wide grip. You look at the FN57, for example, a very wide grip that actually is not uncomfortable to hold, but it's a challenge for the designer. And here, I don't see any way that that grip is, is genuinely wide enough to accommodate a 27 millimeter long case. Okay, we've got a rifle, or maybe it's a machine gun. Initial impressions are that foregrip and that weird buttstock pistol grip is very reminiscent of the Hera Arms furniture set for their AR-15. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch The Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt, because they're in that. Because they look sci-fi. But they're not sci-fi, they're just AR-15s. This is not just an AR-15, this is something else. Very large sort of receiver slash barrel shroud setup. Really nice sci-fi design, again, I have to say. So far, ergonomics look basically as we have them today. Things like pistol grips, vertical foregrips, or in this case, a curved semi-angled foregrip. Inline design for a shoulder weapon, absolutely. We've got a, a take on Picatinny rail on the top there for an optic. The drum mag reminds me of, um, of various things the X product drum mags, for example. I'll be interested to see how that fits because it, the front grip appears to be attached to that drum magazine. The biggest issue here, I'm looking now at third, a third person view. Now, spacesuits. Um, if you haven't seen it, watch For All Mankind, fantastic series. And it addresses the issue of holding a weapon with a massive space helmet on in a very straightforward way, but it addresses it nonetheless. Something that gets the sight into the eye line of the astronaut. Well, here we failed to do that because although we've got iron sights on the gun, the guy is looking like two inches over the top of the weapon. Not ideal. You, you, you physically can't aim like that. And Unless he also has a head-up display and even with an with an optic on there 
that's going to need a massive riser to bring it into the eye line. And if you do that, you'll make you're, you're creating significant height over bore. So if you're behind a barrier of any kind, your barrel is going to be in the shooting into the barrier and not over the top of it. Now the white, something that's covered in for all mankind, is um, you don't want your weapon to be black or even something like the modern as a tan color because what you want is white you want a reflective color a white finish reflects heat and prevents the gun getting too hot to hold if you're in a vacuum as well heating of the weapon is is an issue more so than in air because there's no air to carry the heat away from the gun so you one reason for the for a bulkier firearm for use in a vacuum is heat sinks some sort of heat sink to to, to absorb the heat and take it away from the weapon so you don't get cook-offs or the gun burning to the touch. This is a weird one because it's instantly recognizable as inspired by something, but it actually at the same time looks nothing like it. What am I talking about? Well, this is the Mataba MTR-8. This is, I think, un incontrovertibly, nearly, maybe, has to be the inspiration in that it has the cylinder astonishingly far forward that's the inspiration and the real thing looks completely different it has a really tall grip a bizarre knuckle bow attaching the the front of the gun to the grip although that round drum thing looks like the cylinder on the mataba it isn't a cylinder or at least it cannot feed the barrel because the barrel is way above the cylinder or whatever that actually is i'm guessing it's some sort of cooling system we'll find out in a moment i kind of like the fact they reverted to wood in reality though there's really no reason to use wood it's expensive it's fragile compared to modern polymers i have no idea why you'd revert to wood other than purely for fashion reasons and maybe that's the reason <laughs> Okay, so that is some sort of drum magazine. I have no idea how it's feeding into the barrel. The recoil seems excessive for whatever caliber this is. I, I would expect recoil mitigation systems of some kind. This thing should not be as snappy as, as it is with that much muzzle rise. In reality, that would that would seriously limit your rate of fire. If this, thing, if this, if this is recoiling as much as that every shot, you're, you're gonna have to muscle that back down every time. This is another P90 in space, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, it's a bit of a P90 in space. Uh, let's just compare. <laughs> this is one of our P90s. But we can see our design cues are Starfield version has put a barrier between, a trigger guard between the grip and the trigger. Something I've often wondered about in terms of the actual use of this thing. My, my fingers are not that chunky. And if I grip this as intended, I have very little space here or my trigger finger, and I've always wondered if that would be an issue in use. If you view that as a design flaw, this gun has solved it. The general plan form is similar. We have a, a thumb hole style grip. There's a weird piston looking thing on this one. The bullpup configuration, P90 is a bullpup firearm with the grip in front of the breech face. The magazine, very clearly we have major design cue from the top mounted magazine, which is pretty unusual to say the least. Even with this curved or the circular set portion on the back, which is how it rotates the rounds from, from the horizontal to the vertical, as it were, for feeding. That's present on this design as well. I like the way the round count appears just on the surface of the magazine. Uh, in fact, I'd expect almost everything to just have text on it, maybe with a highlighted border to, to bring it to your attention, rather than having a little screen on the gun. And its name is Grendel, which is a nice nod to Anglo-Saxon history. This is this is W A two thousand, isn't it? Yeah, this is a W A two thousand had a baby with a P ninety. <laughs> <laughs> I I really I really like what your what you said, Dave, about this gun being this had some sort of relations with this. <laughs> I think that's very apt. So on the face of it, it's WA2000 in space. And it's an interesting one because if I if I do my nerdy detail thing, it's very different. And yet the very first thing I thought when I saw it is WA2000. And I think that's because 
of a few design cues. Silhouettes. Now, a lot of people are uh, cue off silhouettes. Happens all the time. So people will say, that's that's based on this. And you go, mm, no, you're looking at the outline. The human eye and brain is geared toward pattern recognition and the silhouette is the most basic aspect of that. But in detail, the, the thing can look can actually be completely different. And that's kind of the case here. But, so we have this quite blunt nose, albeit with the, the muzzle device protruding from it, that's present. We have a, a hint of a sort of girder-like rail up here, although it's not that clear, but it was enough, I think, for my brain to pick up on it. The thumb hole stock is there. That's kind of it, really. So I think, I think it's, I think my brain is working off the silhouette, but it has the top mounted magazine of the Space P90 and it shares the thumb hole stock with the Space P90. So quite intriguing. We've got some pretty weird recoil here. It's sort of gyrating. I don't know why. So <laughs> recoil forces are linear by default. The only things that convert them into things like muzzle rise and, and going up to the right are the design of the stock and the biomechanics, if you like, of the human body. All things being equal, it should just go to the rear. The recoil is even more questionable when you, when you think of the caliber Although I guess it would explain why the pistols appear to be so hot, such high recoil. Whatever propellant they're using in that pretty short case. So, so we have to assume that this caseless propellant is super efficient and fast burning and powerful, which is reasonable. Why wouldn't it be? That kind of implies you can use the same compact, lightweight round for everything. Rifles, machine guns, the lot. It would be the holy grail of small arms design to have one caseless cartridge that works for absolutely everything. But what I'm really getting at is it's a lot of recoil for a small cartridge. So let's say the propellant is super efficient and powerful. We'd expect to see recoil mitigation to handle that. And we don't. We, what we see is a lot of handful, quite, you know, a weapon that's quite a handful. So there is this kind of cowboy lawman type old west-esque faction and i think this is where all these guns with the wooden bits are coming from what they've done and the wood helps with this because wood automatically makes us think old but with lots of very sci-fi curves and angles is give a an old west feel without in any way being an old west firearm critically we have well the wood and we have a lever action now does a lever action make any sense centuries into the future? I would say not. In many ways, it makes well, it makes no sense for combat right now. There is, there is literally no reason to have a lever action firearm for, for fighting purposes. The ability to just pull the trigger each time is far, far better than operating anything manual, as cool as a lever is. Okay, this is very interesting. So what I took to be a rifle appears to be more of a grenade launcher. I'm still not sure that lever action makes any sense, but still. Uh, I'm not convinced by that loading situation. The the bottom part of the receiver drops down and you, you insert around at what looks like a very awkward angle that would cause all sorts of fumbles trying to get it in. There's a reason why tube-fed guns are, uh, are typically loaded from the bottom or through a loading gate on the side that gives you uh, plenty of real estate, as it were, to insert the round. This would work better if it was inserted, as you'll see people when they, when they um, drop around into the chamber of a, of a shotgun and then the bolt goes forward, something like that, where you're dropping it in and then a bolt is carrying it forward or something's carrying it forward into the tube for loading in this case. If this was real, a lot of what I say here is extrapolating how this would work if it was real. I know it's a game. <laughs> really like the design of these i kind of don't want to like them but the the combination of the wood with the futuristic metal and polymer oddly works it's very distinctive this for some reason has an adjustable butt pad i don't know why you'd need a, an adjustable butt plate for a shotgun um, it's not going to give you as much adjustment as something like an m4 type telescoping butt it's, it's really for a precision weapon which this is 
Very clearly not. I feel lucky. I included the uh, clip at the end, because fighting in a zero-G environment, the recoil, especially of this, throws you back quite substantially. This is something that always comes up when people talk about guns in space. As far as I can tell, some, something like a, um, like a 5.56 round or equivalent recoil energy to 5.56 for a few shots is not going to be a, not going to send you flying. It's going to disturb your aim. Um, it will start you moving backward. But let's, let's say it's something more powerful, like the, the grenade launcher that we've seen that's going to impart a bit more backward movement to you. To counteract that, it would be very simple to have a program system that has reaction control thrusters that equal out the recoil. So in a far future setting, the recoil, recoil in zero gravity, I can't see it being a problem. If you've got the kit to survive and move, more importantly, in zero G, you've got the ability to counteract the recoil of your firearm. This looks like it shoots actual rainbows, Dave. Yeah, I, says, I think the in design terms, they're probably trying to differentiate from the laser and plasma weapons in Fallout by doing something something different. I think it, it's reminding me of various effects for like Gauss guns or you know, something that gives you that semi-persistent trail of, of a projectile, more so than a blast of energy. But this is a blast of energy as far as I can tell. Why it would be multicolored? don't know. The weapon itself is very blocky. I think that lends itself to trying to convey that this is not a mechanical firearm. The, the, there need be no external representation of moving parts because there aren't any. So why wouldn't it be blocky? If you're having to contain batteries, capacitors, that kind of thing, we'd expect it to be chunky and flat and slab-sided, slab to have buttons on it, which it clearly does. So yeah, I, I think it works well. The, the Where to put your power pack is obviously a consideration for this sort of design and having it the, be the thing you hold to me makes some sense because you're already there ready to snap it off and click on another one and be ready to carry on shooting something like this which is actually similar to how the pp19 bison fits its magazine to me makes quite a bit of sense So I'll give you a heads up on this one. It fires flechette ammo. I can see that on the mag. So it says 7.77 again. So they're, they're very keen on this diameter of projectile. Can't be the same projectile though, because it's a flechette, as you say, Dave. So, and it says, so by 37 millimeters, so that's the case length, dash F but for flechette. Now, what it could well be actually, there are numerous uh, historical attempts at flechette rounds where there is still a projectile or a casing or a sabo for the flechette that would have a diameter. So here, 7.77 millimeters presumably means like the ballistic tip is that diameter. And then inside is a sharp needle type nail thing that would be more likely to penetrate, but in theory would do less damage than a projectile of actual 7.77 millimeters diameter. They, what they're good for is things like penetrating foliage and being used in a scatter and not much else, to be honest with you. They're not great as a small arms projectile, we have learned. So to see them re-emerge in the future, I think is unlikely. Would there be a space reason to do it? Maybe, but probably not because if anything, you don't want projectiles over penetrating and going out the other side and carrying off into space forever and then taking out a whole starship. We have a 1911, sort of. The slide looks absolutely spot on. The safety, the hammer, the takedown lever slash slide stop lever, grip frame, the, the nearly everything is 1911, but we have a really bizarre trigger guard frame shape with that curvature and a huge tall trigger as a result of that. And I don't know why they've done that. There, there is definitely no legal reason for them to have changed that design. And as it says, it's a modified old earth pistol and it clearly is meant to be a 1911. I don't know why you wouldn't just stick to it being a 1911. It's even 45 caliber. I have no idea why you'd want to use this so far in the future, because although we're still making 1911 pattern pistols today, can't imagine we will be then. And we have caseless future ammo that's way more, way more effective. This is a real antique. And again, it's, it's, re it's really bugging me as to why they've changed the design.
there is a practical reason why you would not want to take a vintage conventional earth designed firearm into space or certainly into a vacuum and that is vacuum welding into certain alloys i think mainly similar or nearly always similar alloys of metal will in the absence of oxygen and oxidation more importantly will stick together bond together weld together and that is going to take place where that oxidized layer that's on every metal thing now we deliberately oxidize and we'd coat metal parts to prevent corrosion usually uh, in this case we'd also be trying to prevent this stiction effect but that finish wears on the high points on the contact points so you could find that your sear is welded to the nose of your hammer and, and it won't shoot. You might get enough drag on the slide from the worn parts of the slide contacting the worn parts of the frame that you get a failure to extract or a failure to feed. You know, if you were to take up a brand new 1911, there would be X many rounds before you experience any of these issues as the oxidation layer wears away. And if you put the gun in an atmosphere and let it oxidize the surfaces again and then put it back together and took it out and used it again it would be fine but it's still a consideration in a way that a firearm designed for use in all environments which all of the others would have to be designed for just wouldn't have and i cannot see you ever falling back on a gun that might jam because it's not designed for space This is really confusing. So this is very clearly another slightly ruined, sorry, guys, um, 1911. The frame is identical. All the controls are identical. The slide is a custom slide and the barrel would have to be a custom barrel, but that's it. And yet this is not an old earth pistol. This is somehow a, I don't know, it's implied to be sort of contemporary in some way. It's called an XM2311. They're trying to imply that somehow the 1911 has been reinvented yet again for the 2300s and is even experimental. Someone really likes 1911s, but if they'd like them, they should probably have got them right. I'm sorry, I hate to be so critical. <laughs> Limited magazine capacity. This claims 18. The frame is not wide enough to take 18 rounds. They needed, it, it should have been a, a, a double stack frame, much like this one. So this shares the optical sight mounts, the extended, the muzzle compensator. Uh, that's about it actually, but it, it certainly has, this is a race gun as, as they're known uh, from the 90s. Double width frame giving you a double stack to single feed magazine, which, and this is not 18 rounds. Even this is not 18 rounds. There isn't enough room in the grip. So this, this doesn't make a great deal of sense. So this is kind of intriguing. I like this. This is a fresh take on the ray gun. It's essentially a ray gun. And they haven't gone Fallout, Alien Pistol, Buck Rogers, Foo Fighters album cover, ray gun with it. They've gone for something that is unique to this. Looks very much like a piece of electrical equipment, which <laughs> might sound silly. Somehow the LCD black and white readout works for it as well. It almost doesn't look like a gun. And there's really no reason why a laser pistol should have to look like a gun. I actually really like how it reloads. They're taking the whole front off the, was... the housing of the crystal or the focus beam or the focus, you know, bit of glass or whatever, as well as the energy source, implying that both could be, you know, worn out or need replacing. Yes. And you're just holding the activator. It reminds me of the P11 HK underwater pistol where you're effectively taking the gun off the grip each time you reload it. And that's done because it has to be this sealed unit and you only get those shots and you have to send it back to the factory. Here, I think the idea, or the rationalization at least, would be heat. So, well, sorry, power and heat. So as you, as you rightly say, you've got the power unit on there as well, which you'd have to replace anyway. So why not remove all of that built up heat in one go, throw it away and slap on another, another unit? It's another really neat piece of design. So this, this really does look like the, the Masterpiece Arms riff on the sort of Ingram Mac 10, Mac 11 form factor, but changed up quite drastically in the real gun. And then even more so with this, which, which I think I think has to be based on, on that. Distinctively, that the pistol grip is a conventional angled 
pistol pistol grip rather than what you normally get on hand-to-hand reloading submachine guns, which is a straight pistol grip, often ergonomically pretty poor because they're trying to get the vertical feed, which is more reliable. Feeding at right angles is, is easier to engineer for. Not to say that the Masterpiece Arms is going to be unreliable. As far as I know, it is a pistol. It is, does not have to run at high rates of fire like a like an actual Ingram or something. The departure here would be the yet again a big knuckle bow second trigger guard, which is, seems to be very beloved of the developers of this game. I think it's a it's a very easy way to make something look futuristic. I don't, don't want to criticize, but and it makes sense with spacesuit gloves. But yeah, can't have both trigger guards if you're trying to accommodate gloves. So this weapon, obviously very sci-fi design, but what's interesting is that it differs from the other energy weapons as this type of weapon is called a particle beam rifle and has both physical and energy damage, which implies that it's shooting a physical munition with an energy element, which I thought was an interesting way to differentiate that from purely laser weapons. That is interesting, except that the actual visual report, as it were, the visual, visible signature of the weapon, the muzzle flash, Tracer looks identical to me, or nearly identical, to the what I guess was supposed to be a laser weapon. I don't think they've quite conveyed that idea of energy combined with a with a kinetic projectile, however that's supposed to work. So to me that this seems to work just the same way as as the other energy weapon that we saw. Design-wise, radically different. Insanely tall, I would say. Uh, we, we do have to remember that human the human body doesn't change bulky weapons are never going to be good so if you can if you can avoid that you should why it has a huge spur coming up like we, we've gone absolutely way into left field with not only as a redundant knuckle bow trigger guard but that now extends all the way almost to the butt stop so as unique as this design is and very cool looking it's a it's a head scratcher as far as ergonomics goes and for me as far as how it should work as well i'm not really not quite sure what it's supposed to be those were guns from the much anticipated new starfield game which i'm absolutely sure i will get around to at some point as always please do check out our own royal armories youtube channel if you would like to uh, our website our social media channels our physical bricks and mortar museums as well if you'd like to do that uh, we really appreciate you watching uh, both our stuff and this um, this wonderful series over on GameSpot and we'll see you here next week.